Welcome to another week of the Buffalo Game Space Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Giles. And I'm the other host, Kendall. Still no last name. <laughs> Still no last name. You're dropping a letter, too. Just one L this time, not two. Apparently, And yeah. then next week will be Kenda. <laughs> it's getting shorter. Eventually it'll just be K, just and K. then I'll be no one. And then it'll just be... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's classy. <laughs> um... But it's just you and me right now. Butch might. I think I hear him. I think I might hear a Butch out there right yeah. now. Well, I can't take Butch that risk. Coming. We can't wait. <laughs> no, can't wait for stragglers bringing the podcast down. So, yeah, it's just you, me, and the rest of America. Uh, the point zero zero one percent that listens to this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> That's, I wonder how many people that is. It's probably way probably more, more than actually, people than actually yeah. listen to this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> At least right now. <laughs> Either way uh unless it's less than zero it's definitely more than listen to this podcast it's definitely not less than zero <laughs> there are way too many people in america for that. i'm not good at math <laughs> i'm but that sounds right math. i think you're right <laughs> we did get our first hater though we did Hate which is a success if you know like i'll take it yeah i'm just happy anybody's even reacting to it at all <laughs> right like uh it's just been every other episode has been just silence even from yeah. like people at the space don't even say shit about it so yeah. the fact that somebody on the internet was like fuck you i was like oh cool like <laughs> you actually listen engagement. to it <laughs> yeah yeah it's well, a start <laughs> i mean you know yeah i don't like do anything on youtube except for like make random playlists so like comments likes nothing <laughs> no yeah the comments are always like like I, I when i read comments i don't just like read them as normal like i go into like okay like I go into this weird mode of like I don't I don't know how to explain it, but like let's see what the comments are for this shit. Like it's like <laughs> this weird objective, like yeah, I'm going for a ride kind of right, thing. exactly. Yeah, like like you know it's comments. gonna be a mess, and yeah. you're just like, all right, let's see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know I'm not looking at reality <laughs> or a very disturbed part of reality at least. <laughs> well, it's true. Yeah. Well, you know, oh, and almost invariably, like comments are just like. Like, I don't ever leave them because it's like, who gives a shit yeah. what I have to say? But right. other people don't have that thought. They're just like, oh, people need to hear what right. I have to right. say. <laughs> no, it's either like shit posting or like people being like, oh, I came here from this. Oh, and, oh my God. That's, that's the crazy. worst. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. So uh, you have been playing a little known game by the name of, I forgot. I've never heard of it. What was it? Something about the sky, I think, maybe? Sky. Space. Skyward Sword? No, that's that's too well known. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no Man's Sky? Yeah. That's uh, that was it. <laughs> um, I know. Never heard of it before. It's I like, don't think many what? people have. No. It wasn't hyped very well. And, no, not at uh, all. There's like maybe two players. I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, did you play by yourself? Yeah. I, mean, I think you have to, from what I understand. Probably. Uh, maybe. Yeah. So, this game seems right up your alley, right up my alley as well. Like, you and I both seem to like exploring games. Yeah. Um, and I haven't played this yet, but I'm looking forward to it, and I'm wondering what you thought about it. Um, yeah, I mean, I play probably mostly exploration games. Uh, you know, anything where you have to survive and, like, collect things and discover. Uh, I really like, you know, I played Subnautica, and, like, the whole idea of exploring an alien ocean is just like, oh, this is so cool. Like, oh, okay. You know, um just discovering new life um and i think part of the reason that i'm drawn to that is i've always wanted to go to space um and i love the idea of like alien life being out there so have you ever heard of the comedian pat oswalt no he's a comedian oh really yeah <laughs> shocking um and he wrote well he's he also he, he writes a lot of uh he does he, he like when a script's not funny, mm -hmm. he's like a guy they'll bring in to make it funny. Oh, so he does nice. a lot of that work too. He's just, but um, he wrote a book called Zombie Spaceship Wasteland. And the premise of the book is certainly for like, prop, maybe everybody, but certainly for like nerds, you fall into like one of three genres that are encapsulations of how you who you are and how you see the world so you're either you're either into zombies spaceships or wastelands 
especially when you're a kid growing up Mm -hmm. and that depending on which one you choose is insight into who you are so would you say of those three are you spaceship yeah probably it's interesting yeah that or yeah i think i think out of those three the the one that i lean towards least is zombie so probably spaceship is something yeah they all have to do with like to me i think anxieties of some kind is his his system like you can't be a part of it without some implication of anxiety being mm-hmm. the source of this choice which is one is like zombie is supposed to be like social anxiety Interesting. so you just feel like you're in this world of like hostility and these like creatures you can't understand and you're, you're constantly trying to just like isolate and mm-hmm. you're very like protective so like people that are into zombie games probably feel that way and maybe that's why they relate to zombies Mm -hmm. spaceship was like you're trying to get away from something Mm -hmm. so like the example he used in this was like one of his his friends when he was a kid was always into spaceships because his dad was like abusive so he always wanted to get away from stuff yeah and uh wasteland is like this sort of loner mentality of like you're just always a tourist and um you just sort of like walk around and everything feels very like you look at everything as if it's like very alien and I guess unnatural or not that it's unnatural, but it's just not not so assumed. Maybe I don't mm-hmm. know. You're very critical of things. And I always thought that was really interesting. Yeah, that's, uh, that's especially interesting because um, you mentioned like the zombie one is like social anxiety. Um, and then I said that one's the one that I identify like the least with. Mm-hmm. And yet I'm like clinic well I've, I've gone off the meds now but i'm clinically diagnosed as having social anxiety yeah i'm sure so i do too. yeah it's interesting how it's like you know i don't feel like i associate with that and then i have to yeah right well that's because like your coping method is is probably escape, escape. Right? yeah that yeah. makes sense <laughs> in this real yeah. doctorate uh <laughs> <laughs> dr pat noswalt's uh three-tiered system yeah. maybe not maybe like more like a venn diagram than i'd hear is yeah that, um, I'm sure everyone like overlaps. So yeah, of course. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> uh, that's really cool. I need to check that out. You should read the book. The book's yeah. awesome, and that part's actually pretty thoughtful and interesting. Mm-hmm. But most of the book is comedy. It's really oh, funny. Yeah. If you listen to Audible, it's on that. Check out audible.com. Uh, that'll be. This is for our future episodes after we get sponsored. Yeah, by Audible. Hey, Audible uh, <laughs> please give us money. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and I'm just gonna start. Yeah, I'm gonna start now so that when we get sponsored, we're better at it. Because I'm, because right now I'm stumbling through this, but I don't want to be doing that when I'm actually. I'm also kind peddling. of distracting you. <laughs> you are, but I should be better than that. It's what the practice is for. Yeah. Uh, so with your first free audiobook that you get from Audible.com/slash/bgs, try it. Like if you're in the past, try it now. It probably works already, and get Zombie Spaceship Wasteland. Hey. And anyways, back to No Man's Sky. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that game no one's ever heard of. Yeah. Um, yeah so, I'm, yeah. I think... You like exploration. Yeah. Forever. And it's, I guess, what the main concern that everyone has with the game is, like, how long can you just explore and before you get bored? And, like, that's definitely something I've been thinking a lot about is, like, you know, how many hours am I going to put into this game before I'm like, well... I want to explore somewhere else. Well, how many hours have you put into the game? Not a lot so far, just because I've been uh, out of town. I've been like in, two or like ten? Like two. Yeah. Um, I think I've put in maybe like three hours, actually. Um, and you played on PC? Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously right now it's still really fun. I'm still enjoying like discovering stuff and like naming planets. I'm. It, you really can name anything, but I'm like, this is... There's, too much brain power i'm just gonna name the planets i'm, I'm good with that thing like, yeah you mean like yeah. you don't care yeah i mean like i don't want to name every single plan yeah like they come up with interesting enough names so i'm like all right sure go oh, ahead. Just, it'll just randomly generate one yeah, yeah and, and there's like long or like hard to pronounce whatever names and i'm like you know what fine it yeah. sounds spacey i'm gonna just stick with it you don't and you don't you don't care about like marking your territory marking your planet um not really. No. I'm like, I guess I'm just more of like a passive observer. Um, you know, a lot of people like they go in and they're like, um, you know, they want to do all this stuff. And I'm just like, oh, I'm going to look at these things. All right, bye. I'm going to look at the next thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm just hopping around. But like, there's definitely 
even even at hour three or whatever the hell I have, um, you, I'm starting to see a lot of repetition with um, the way that you find intelligent life. So like the aliens that you come across and like the the clearly not organically um, generated structures. I would say man-made, but they're aliens. Um, so like you always find like little beacons or like maybe a tiny little base that's been abandoned or like a larger base that has one alien in it. And like, Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it's very predictable and they're always like a certain space apart. There's nothing that's like a city or like a colony. It's just like one little thing. Um, and so that like, you know, that's probably going to be the first thing that gets old. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like, Oh, I don't want to go and find all this stuff again. Right. Because I pretty much know what it's going to be right. and grr. Even if it's like different clothes, it's the same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I went um, I went to like the galaxy like closest to the one that I spawned into and you know, it's like a new race and you have to like find all the little like, um, oh, what are they called? Like the little stone things that like teach you a word of the alien language. Um, oh. And it's just like, you know, I, f- I found not that many of them, like maybe... 20 or so 15 20 um in the first galaxy how does that work so if you find a stone you like activate it and then it's like the whatever the alien race name the name for say like spacecraft or the name for so how does that then unlock the language is it just subtitled and that word is filled in and everything else is like dots or gibberish yeah it's just gibberish um and, you know, it's like I got into this new system and I'm just like, oh, Jesus, like, I don't want to have to go around every single one of these again and like right. put a ton of effort into finding them. Into, like, he- into it, grinding these s- mm-hmm. stones and then only to hear the same dialogue that they've always been saying. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Like, and that was one thing, like if you go to a space station, um, you get alien spaceships like flying in and out and you can like trade with the people. But like, even if you can't understand what they're saying, you realize extremely quickly that they're just, you know, there's like maybe seven or so lines of dialogue and they just go through every single one of them. That sounds completely unrewarding. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's super boring. So like, I mean, for me, I'm really just going around and like looking at all the random animals and like plant life and like collecting um resources and blah 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 i think probably the most interesting part of the game is what they don't tell you um about like the sentinels uh those are kind of like the i guess like police force uh of the galaxy that's sort of how i've heard them so we're getting to get into some story stuff here it's not really story okay it's just like they're there if you take too much of like certain resources they'll get mad at you if you try to break into a locked facility, they get mad at you. Yeah. Um, so I've done a lot of, like, you can fight them, but they're way stronger than you are, at least at first. Yeah. Um, and they bring back up. It's kind of it's kind of a similar system to GTA where there's, like, five little, uh, they're not stars, but they're basically the same system where, like, oh, you'll yeah. get, like, a certain number of them. And then, like, that affects, like, how many of these little bot things come and shoot lasers at you okay um and then you know they call for reinforcements and stuff if you like they're just sort of like infinite ones so if you piss them off there's like no winning really yeah if you piss them off basically you're way better off running away can you lose the stars like in gta as well yes so um i broke into a manufacturing facility and basically what i did is i would like shoot the door a bunch of times yeah and then once they were alerted i would just like run off to the other side of like this little canyon i was in and then they would you know it took them uh like it was a short enough time for them to lose interest that like i didn't have to like really run far away um and i was in a big enough space so i just like ran off to the side and then like looped around and came back um and shot the door again and did this you know until it broke down um and then like as soon as it broke down if you like run inside the manufacturing facility and just stay there for a minute they don't well at least for me they didn't come inside so it you know then they stopped looking for me again it was just like all right now i'll go on my way um yeah it's kind of arbitrary but um it would be interesting to know like who put them there what sort of force they follow blah blah blah. they're on every planet every planet every planet every moon and how do they know you're doing stuff they um they have like little scanners so if you for the resource thing if you take a bunch of resources they'll come to the area and then they like you can see the little scanner beam and they look at like what you've taken um so yeah i don't know sensors 
magic. <laughs> so if you if you mine too much stuff, it'll yeah. Do this so too? um, you kind of have to like mine a little bit and then like go to another area and mine a little bit there. It's I mean, I've noticed that I don't have to take a huge amount of stuff. Um, part of that is you have a very very limited inventory. Um, so really the first thing in the game that you learn is what do I really need and what do I not need? And like, you know, as someone who plays a lot of Minecraft, it's very easy to be like, Ooh, gold, I'm going to take all of this and be like, Oh shit. Right. What do I do with this? Yeah. Um, and you can sell things to the intergalactic trade network or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, (laughs) but you can only do that at like a space station or if you come across like one of those little, one of the bigger um, structures on the surface that have an alien in it that usually has a, a trade network thing. Uh-huh. Um, but they're not everywhere. So uh-huh. you can't just like jump into your ship and be like, all right, so take my gold and take this. Um, so you really have to figure out how to like balance your inventory. And I've, I've kind of got myself to the point where I'm like, okay, I take exactly what I need and everything else can just stay because I don't care enough, you know, and I don't have the space. Um, right. You don't care enough. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the times, like, you'll... There are things that you can loot through. Um, It'll give you, like, a Gek charm or something, which is something that's, as far as I know, completely useless except for selling. Um, Maybe it has more use later in the game, but for right now, I don't give a shit about it. And a lot of times, I'll just drop it, because I'm like, I'm not going to find a trade network anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Like, I need the inventory space for more power for my ship. So, fuck So, that's what, what what is the most valuable stuff you keep? Um, I think it's called plutonium. Yeah. Unless they give it a really weird name, it's plutonium. Um, and basically every time that you go to take off from the surface of the planet, like if you land to go and look at something, every time you take off, it takes, um, 25% of your thruster power. So like you get four uses on full thruster and then you have to like refill it and it's just kind of a bitch and Mm. really annoying so i'm like constantly gathering plutonium um you use thamium 9 to uh not to go into like full warp but to move faster when you're going between planets um and it doesn't use that nearly as fast as like your plutonium gets depleted um and that sort of is how much it uses depends on like how far you're going um and then you need to you know it has like it's not really a tutorial, but it tells you, like, what you need to make um, and, you know, how to get to, like, the next galaxy and stuff like that. Um, so you had to craft, like, antimatter and then, like, a warp cell and a couple of warp cells and stuff. Um, so, yeah, you you definitely... So pretty much just stuff to go to the next planet to pretty get much. stuff to go to the next planet yeah. to get stuff to go to the next planet. Yep. yep. All right. You see why I'm sort of worried about this game getting boring. (laughs) Yeah. And so like, but when you're on the planet and you're exploring, Mm -hmm. what's been like the cool stuff you found? Stuff that. Um, I think, and this is going to sound kind of weird, but like, I really like the colors. Yeah. Like the game is just very pretty and like has interesting colors and like, um, unless you land on a planet that doesn't have any animal life, um, you know, there's generally, like, a bunch of stuff to look at. And, like, it's kind of cool going around and, like, trying to discover all of the animals. And, like, you can also discover all the plant life, but, you know, it doesn't move. So it's a little less interesting. You, and when um, you say discovered, is it, like, it says, like, so discovered this you kind get, of plant? Yeah, you get, like, a scanner uh, with your little multi-tool thing. Um, and you have to keep it equipped, which I do because I like discovering this stuff. Um, and if you, like, I think it's the F key... Um, you zo- zoom in a little bit and um, if you hover over whatever you want to look at if you haven't discovered it yet it kind of does like this little analyzing loading thing and then it comes up and it's like it gives you um, the name like the their pre-generated name um, and it gives you a couple of stats about it like you know what does it eat what its temperament is blah blah, blah. there are some hostile creatures um not a huge amount and i've noticed that if you just jump on top of your spacecraft that's you know enough to deter them well they just kind of sit there and they're like come down here and i'm like no fuck you do they just walk away no they just kind of sit there there. um that at that point i generally just like leave yeah (laughs) like just go to another part on the planet because like there's you know the resources i need are basically all over the place so it's like you know that's fine um but it's it's interesting and then one thing um the place meaning you can get it anywhere 
Yeah, like I can just like pick up and move like however many you kilometers mean, like, to the left, thing and then yeah, to like fine. go to the next planet, and it's pretty. Yeah, common. like the plutonium is super common on every planet. Yeah, you um, gotten to a planet where there's just none. I've gotten to a planet where there's less, and I've freaked out a little bit. Where I'm like, oh shit, I have to like walk a little further to get this, and like you know your life support drains, and um, some planets are like toxic some are too hot some are too cold um so you have to sort of keep an eye on that kind of stuff so you can't really just completely wander away from your ship um what happens if you die i haven't died i have no idea <laughs> Man, you're too good at this game i know right damn yeah i'm wondering like what happens if all right you get you you're like i gotta get off this planet i only have enough for like to go to one more planet but then you land on that next planet and there's nothing. And yeah. it's just toxic and you can't even go outside of what you just die, I guess. Um, I don't think there's any planets where you just like can't go outside. Um, I think there probably will be planets where like you're um uh, I think they call it like um environment resistance or whatever, where that will go down faster, maybe depending on the toxicity. Um but in general, I've noticed it doesn't go down that fast. Um, if you find a structure or some caves, um, it'll like make that go up. Especially if it's uh, a planet where it's just like cold. If you go into a cave, a cave, then it'll like warm up a little bit. Um, so you can do that. Um, but like you know, on this one of the last planets that I landed on, I didn't have like plutonium like at my fingertips, so I had to walk a little bit. But like you know, you there's um once you land there's like little question marks that pop up and if you hover over them it says like you'll arrive here in like 20 minutes if you're on foot and then if you jump into your spacecraft it like says like 20 seconds um not 20 minutes like two minutes <coughs> um and generally if you go to those things like there's more resources around there um so it really just depends but yeah um one thing that i really like though uh which i like this distracted me for a good half hour, 45 minutes, was um, some animals, like some of the more timid ones, um, if you can get close enough to them, some of them you can feed. And um, th the first time I fed an animal, I kind of like fed it and then walked away and stopped paying attention to it. But um, this one on the planet that I'm on right now, I fed it and um, I like started to walk away and then the little icon, um, so it gets like a little smiley above its face, which is cute. Um, but then, like, as I was walking away, it turned into a question mark, and I was like, oh, wait, what's this? Or, like, an exclamation point or something. Mm -hmm. And I walked back over to it, and it had, like, dug up a resource that I needed, and I was like, oh, oh like, this is great. And so, like, I just followed him around for a while, and he kept, like, digging things up, and, like, you know, every time I came over and, like, got the resource that he, like, found for me, got, like, he was happy, and it was, like, oh, yeah? so cute. I was just like, <laughs> oh, my God, like, this is the derpiest-looking animal, but, like, yeah. he's so adorable. <laughs> what were you feeding him? Some... I have no idea. You don't even know. <laughs> the game does not get that specific. So it's not a resource you have? You can just do it? I don't think so. Hmm. Um, it could very well have been like I had like something carbon something he would have, that yeah. he wanted to eat, but I have no idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was kind of like a cool little mechanic because like either he'd bring me over to like a supply crate that I hadn't looted or he'd like dig up, like he'd dig into the dirt. A it was this faster or more time efficient than doing it yourself? Um, hard to say. Um, I was sort of in an area with not very much around, so, like, the little things that he would, like, pull up out of the dirt, because they weren't there before he dug them up, was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but you also have a scanner on your multi-tool, and if you just hit scan, it'll show you, like, what's around you, and you sort of learn the symbols, um, and, you know, you can just be like, okay, I need to go over here, and then I'll get this, but, you know, just part of following him around is, like, a really cool, like, thing. I'm like, oh, like... You're my friend now. <laughs> Have you gone back to that planet? You think he'd recognize you? Um, I'm still there. Uh, I haven't left yet because I'm sort of walking around trying you, to you're following do stuff. This guy? Um, no, actually. So when I saved and exited out, when I came back, he was gone. It was oh. very sad. Yeah. That is sad. He probably died. I have no idea. He probably got eaten. <laughs> Maybe. He probably got torn apart alive. Oh, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> um. All right. Uh. So you're enjoying it, but you're just not sure how long that is going to last. Yeah, how much yeah. more steam it's got, right? Yeah. I mean, and that was one thing. Like again, going back to Subnautica, like um, part of what made me stop playing that or want to play it less was like um, 
I guess maybe scarcity of materials and like you needed such like a broad range of them for Subnautica so like you had to keep going to like all these different places Mm -hmm. um, and getting materials and I also fucked up and like made my base super unstable and then it like filled with water and I couldn't fix it (laughs) because I couldn't find like the crash powder or what I don't know Um, (laughs) something that it was really hard to get and I was just like all right fuck this I'm yeah. getting mad now you just quit um I, I like fair. quit for a little while and then I came back and I was like Meh, goodbye um I thought that was a completely di- I thought that was the game with like multiplayer sharks and humans that's depth uh, yeah okay um, Subnautica is just completely exploration e exploration survival yeah. yeah um it's almost completely underwater yeah um but anyway um so like I kind of stopped playing that just because like uh, I forget exactly what it was, but something about crafting was kind of difficult, and like that's something that I saw a little bit of in um, No Man's Sky, because when I was trying to craft like the antimatter and stuff, um, I guess I didn't realize that I didn't have like the recipe for it. I like d- hadn't found something that enabled me to make it. Um, so I was just kind of sitting there, and I'm like, I have this thing, and it says it's useful for crafting antimatter. What else do I need? Like, please tell me. What the fuck do I need? Like, what the hell? And then I had to go to this other place. But you and, like, knew you needed antimatter for something? Yeah, for the warp cell. For the warp To right. get to another um, And you didn't system. know what else you needed, though. Yeah, and it was just like, you need this, and it's helpful for crafting antimatter. I'm so like, how did well, you figure out how to craft freaking... it? Um, I went to another planet, and it told me there was, like, an abandoned, like, mining facility or something nearby. And it was one of those things that I had to break into and run away from the <laughs> iBots. Yeah. Um, or... Uh, Centuries or whatever the hell I don't remember. What yeah, called. I call them iBots. Um, <laughs> and iBots. Yeah. <laughs> what is that like? They look I think like it's eyeballs from something oh, else, okay. but I don't know what it is. I don't know. Anyway. All right. Um, but I had to like run away from them, and then once I broke in, it actually I think glitched where I like reloaded a save because um maybe I died. I don't actually remember. Um, I I like reloaded because I. Oh, I remember. No, you haven't died yet, you said. No, I haven't died. So what it was is I like started fighting the eye things because I was like, maybe it's better if I like get rid of them. Maybe they like won't come back. And then they like were right. bringing reinforcements. And, and, and I was just like, yeah. oh, nope. Okay, yeah. we're going to reload. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what it was. And then when I reloaded, it just gave me the recipe. And I was like, ooh, that's um, that's a glitch. I'm just going to break into the f- this facility anyway. It just gave it to you? Yeah. Wait, why from... what? I don't know. It like glitched out because I was supposed to get it after I broke into this facility. Uh, but then when I reloaded, it was like, you learned how to like craft antimatter. Uh, I was okay. like, mm, mm. no, I didn't, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then I just broke in there and like stole all this stuff and whatever. But um, yeah, so like then I could make it. Yeah. And I had everything I needed to make it. And I was like, motherfucker. So you had Why couldn't I have already? just done this yeah. before? Exactly. Yeah. So it's like that kind of got annoying. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I mean... I know other people at the space have played a lot more of it than I have. I was, like, talking to Tom, and he said, you know, he, like, showed me this, like, massive ship that he just bought for, like, a million dollars. I'm like, well, I'll get there eventually. <laughs> yeah, but for what? Um, I don't know. More inventory space. Really. I mean, That's what it comes down to is more inventory space. Yeah. It's yeah. What do you hope to see in this game? Like, um, Going back to something that I got completely sidetracked from when I started talking about the um, iBots. Uh, your kind of goal at the beginning is you can either travel to the center of the universe or, like, explore. And, like, the game very clearly wants you to travel to the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. So, I'm very sincerely hoping that when you get there, which I'm sure will take an extremely long amount of time and be really annoying, but when you get there, there will be something very interesting. Like, something maybe that will explain, like, what Atlas is and what the iBots are and blah 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 because like there are these atlas passes i was gonna say what is that yeah so, far? so that's a, that's an excellent question yeah. <laughs> that i can't really answer but um if you go into these little space station places yeah they're locked doors and it says like atlas pass level one or level two or level whatever required and like i don't have any i don't know how to get them i should probably go ask google but i'm lazy mm. um well, that's, see that was one of my questions i was yeah. are, are you looking stuff up yeah you kind of you don't necessarily have to, but I find myself doing it just because I'm like, I just want to know. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have to like faff about trying to figure this out. I just want to know. Um, and that's just because I'm impatient. But um, yeah, so like... Well, it doesn't... I, I just... I don't know. There's no real explanation for what Atlas is. It, there's like a thing right at the beginning of the game 
where there's like this red orb thing um and it asks you like do you want to like follow atlas or like not and i said yes because i was like all right this sounds like an interesting story potentially yeah um and then it just doesn't explain it so i'm like very sincerely hoping that as you travel towards the center of the universe you get more information but like from what i've seen i'm not super hopeful Hmm. so i don't know yeah it sounds vague and it doesn't sound like what you discover is rewarding so like Mm -hmm. to me it seems like looking it up is a better option because it's not like if you don't look it up and you just try stuff Mm -hmm. just the way this game is just doesn't sound like it's that's a fun way it doesn't it it doesn't have like the payoff right exactly yeah 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 so it's like you're putting in this effort you're finding all these materials and that's just more of the same right well why did i do this yeah like none of it I don't know. None of it sounds all that original to me. Mm-hmm. Like, none of it, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like... And, I mean, they did have a really small team, so I'm sure they were, like, super limited in what they could do. But also, like, I've heard a lot of things about how they're, like, saying, like, they really weren't trying to make, like, a super involved, complicated game. But, like, I would love to see a game in this format where you go to all these different planets and stuff that actually had like a lot of this variety that we're talking about and like something that is payoff and like you know more in-depth like stories i guess i'm looking for like a space rpg right you know and i'm hoping that it goes into that or that Mm -hmm. people start finding that like maybe it's already there yeah and they and they ran the numbers and they're like okay if we make it this common people will find it in a day and if we make Mm -hmm. it this common it's like probably going to be a month yeah I wonder if there's any of that. Yeah, because that's and that's what I'm kind of hoping about, like traveling towards the center of the universe is maybe once you get to like a certain point, you'll start be seeing more interesting, more involved things. Yeah. But, well, let us know. Yeah. I'm interested to see what this goes. And try not to look too much stuff up because I'd like yeah. your reactions to be as candid as possible right, considering definitely. how much. That's why I haven't looked up like the whole Atlas Pass thing. Because yeah. I'm just like, if I'm going to get this, I kind of want to like just get it on my yeah, own. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like a thing that might. If anything's going to pay off for not looking it up, you know, it might be that. Yeah, definitely. But, yeah. All right. No Man's Sky. Hey, John. Yeah, turn that on. Put just join us. What's up, guys? Hey. Walking on the tail end of No Man's Sky. The new Zelda game, No Man's Sky. Yeah, it sounds like... (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) (laughs) I missed an entire joke of being in this podcast. (laughs) No, we were talking about... What you guys were just talking about the last one was like just playing the law of numbers like did they do it and i saw a video floating around yesterday where somebody was like i'm gonna show you the secrets like this is what happens when you get to the center of the galaxy and there's like this thing and it actually tells you to go this place and then you go to this place and then there's another thing to tell. but you know they didn't finish this game so i don't feel like finishing this video and it ends and it went viral yesterday wow <laughs> so I, is it, it's a slam on uh yeah, like it's like, a, it's like, it's like a, it is actually like showing you like if you go here, then this will happen, and yeah. then you go here, and then it's like, but they didn't actually finish this game, so why should I finish this video and a video? And wow, it's just like Asshole. oh, burner, <laughs> oh. sucks, idiots. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but awesome. Now I actually do want to go to the center of the universe. Sounds good. Oh I'm no, do spoilers to do. Oh, no, right. Maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> it was a stupid burn video, so so who really knows? Fair yeah, enough. yeah, exactly. Um. Yeah, yeah, so what have you guys been getting into? Well, there was that. I beat Demon Souls yesterday. The original? Yep. The OG Demon Souls. It's interesting. It's a good game. It was a better game than I thought it would be. Speaking of payoff for hard work. Yeah, it's there. It's good. Yeah, it was like, I wasn't sure if it, the game was going to be like horribly broken, and, and maybe it is in some ways, but um, it's tough. There's some parts of it. There's a lot of it that I don't... I don't know. There's some elements to it that I think are just, like, t- hard in an unfun way. But overall, I guess I'd just say, like, it's as good... It's better than I thought it would be. And... Um, when you're talking about things that are hard in an unfun way, do you think it does that more than the Dark Souls games? Yeah. Or, yeah. Definitely. Okay. So would you say this one is like harder to get into yeah. for that reason? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It's like, of all of them, the most like acquired taste. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't, it didn't even really click for me till I was like pretty much at the end. So I'm playing it again. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Wow. This is all, there's a lot more going on here than I thought. And, um, 
it's a lot more coherent than I thought, but there's a lot of stuff in it too that like you just put up with Mm -hmm. and, um, it has a lot more video gamey stuff than other dark souls does, you know, but you know, it was the first one. So makes some sense. Yeah. Anytime you go back that far and you're just like, Oh man, this UI is just broken. Yeah. People who thought this worked were stupid. (laughs) And, but it's only just through time and cleaning it up and actually like learning from their lessons and actually fixing their horrible design mistakes in the past. Yeah. Like they get it better and better. And Dark Souls, you can see that like really well through each one because they're so blatantly just retries at the same game almost. Like they definitely are unique and worth playing individually, but they're also like just clearly refined executions so you know what sucks in demon souls got a lot better in dark souls and what sucks in dark souls got a lot better for like we're gonna pretend two never happened for three (laughs) um so which is your least favorite game (laughs) (laughs) but yeah um and that's another reason those games are kind of fun to play because it's like each of them are so similar broadly speaking but they're also so different once you engage them that it's kind of cool to see a game do that. It's cool to see them walk their ideas out like in game to game and stuff. Um, and it actually even goes back to like these like PS1 games uh, called Kingsfield. And that's where a lot of this stuff even started. But that's a good example of going back to a game and just being like, what the fuck is this interface? Like what? It, what are they? <laughs> like, like uh, that game actually, it might even be PS2, I think. But it's like pre dual uh, joy or p- dual joysticks. And um, so you use the bumpers to turn and stuff like that. And oh. It's just like, this is. Yeah, there's. Uh, I mean, old. forget the old tank controls. It's just kind of giving me flashbacks of just like some old design stuff. And the conversations that people would have when they really like a game or like a way to play a game, and they just defend stuff that is indefensible like tank controls uh, (laughs) tank controls the only one that i could even say that it's even slightly defensible is like early resident evil because it kind of added to something to the fact that you were if if you were if you had the agility of resident evil 4 and there wasn't a resident evil you just crush that game yeah right it 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 would not nearly have the same impact it makes it more difficult and more scary in artificial and i'm not saying it's a good design decision because it's kind of like an artificial constraint but, yeah, people uh, say that about the Silent Hill games too, and like I think it's a good point, but also kind of seems like a stretch to me. But you think back to like some of the old RPGs, and uh, Oblivion kind of had it, but even if you go back even further, like a lot of old RPGs, when you got like keys and stuff, they went into your inventory, mm-hmm. and they took up like space in your inventory, and they got better later where they had like their own section in the inventory. But it used to right. be like you had to cycle through your whole inventory, and if you found like a door that was locked. You had to cycle through your whole inventory to find the key that would open that door. Yeah. And use the key, and then it would open the door. Right. But it, you didn't just go up to a door and hit A, and it's like, I found this in your inventory. I've opened it right. for you. Yeah. Like, modern games all yeah. do that. Yeah. But back in the day, it was, and the instant one, there's like, well, you're just an idiot that doesn't know how to play the game. Like, it's supposed to be that way. If you forgot you have that key, you shouldn't be able to open that door. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, you know you're know, you playing like a pleb. Like, the game should just do it for you, yeah. you loser. Like, that stuff all started even there. And you see it today, too, where people get on their high horse about certain games they play and the way they play them. It's like, well, really? It's just holding your hand like that and you freaking lose it? It's like, no. The stuff that you're even doing, people in the 90s would kick you in the mouth for. <laughs> yeah. Like, the thing that you think is hard is actually really easy and compared to and like tedious. and doing stuff for you. Like, yeah. But you just grew up in a later age where they figured out a lot of this crap yeah. already. So it's just funny to constantly see that happening. And not to tie it back into No Man's Sky, but I hear some of that coming out of the, the hate for that, too, just a little bit, and how people play it. It's like, no, man, you're just not engaging with it right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, know. There's no right way to play a game, like, ever, right, exactly. in my opinion. Like, you play it as fun as it is in a way that's fun for you, and that's, yeah. that's really all there is to it. Yeah, I mean, like, the developers putting out something, and then, like, the experience is, you know, definitely m- made of what they put out but it's a lot of what you bring to it and like that's like one of the things um about no man's sky like with the multi-tool like you can either make like an attacking tool where you can like shoot stuff or you make it like just for 
Um, but I've done where it's like all about like scanning and like collecting resources, and it's, you know you can play both oh, ways. Oh, you, you both like valid. spec it out to do the thing you yeah. want to do in the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like each add-on takes up an inventory slot, so yeah. like you really have to figure out like you know which one do I want because you can't really do both. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you know I mean I'm sure a lot of people are like, oh well, like you're just collecting resources. That's dumb. You should fight like the Ivots. It's like no, I don't want to. You know, uh, Civilization always did that really well. Like mm-hmm. you could always win by you could win by like diplomatic victory or cultural victory or exploration victory or war science. victory yeah, yeah science like that was i thought that was always a good yeah. way to do that because i was never interested in the war stuff mm-hmm. um yeah i'm doing my like first war playthrough right now and i'm just like oh so, uh, yeah because it's, it's just like it it bogs down progress right yeah. like you're trying to like the, the, the part of it is like better, your you've troops take up so much of your money. Take up your that, money like, and your time, your yeah. production time. Yeah, it's super annoying. Yeah. But then when you take over a country, you get all their shit. Okay. You yeah, get a lot then, of unhappiness <laughs> from that, though. Like, I'm in a point right now where I have, like, negative unhappiness. And I'm, like, people keep, uh, my troops, like, keep turning into, like, barbarian troops. And I'm like, you motherfuckers. You mean negative ah. happiness. Negative unhappiness would be happiness. Right. You know what I meant. Get no, <laughs> I just explained it, but I had no idea. <laughs> Moving along. <laughs> um, but yeah, what were we saying? Playing games. It's generally what we talk about on this podcast. You haven't been playing anything, John? Not really. <laughs> we all have the about same anything? problem. We're all I've been, busy. I've been working on a lot of stuff. I've been tinkering with some other VR things. Um, played some hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades yesterday. That was a lot of fun, That's actually. A really excellent title. Yeah, actually, um, Anton Hand uh, went to UB, and like uh, his crew, some of the guys around here know them. Um, and I met them mm. out in Boston at a, con- at a game dev con, and... Um, they made this really. They got and he got really into like hand controls in VR, and he just started kind of making these weird little demos just to test out like what you could do with like interactions. And it's mm-hmm. kind of rolls snowballed itself into this thing called hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades, where it's basically a shooting gallery of various sizes and shapes, where there's all the types of crazy stuff like dynamite and grenades and guns and all this stuff, but they're all realized in as much accuracy as you can actually pull off in a VR game. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, a Colt 1911 on the table. Mm -hmm. You have to pick it up and you have to pick up a clip and put it in and like rack the chamber, like chamber around and click off the safety. And only then can you like fire it. And Hmm. it's all kind of, it looks really cool. It actually feels really cool. Like it actually feels you know, minus the kick and whatnot, it feels pretty as close as I've seen to actually shooting a gun in a video game. Like, yeah, ever. that's neat. Like comparing it to like real life style, most of the you know anything first person camera styles, like yeah, gun face, whatever. You never really get that good stuff. And VR has been getting closer to it, and this is the closest one that I've actually feel like you kind of feel like you're actually at a shooting range and like trying out different weapons, and you can kind of feel how they fire different. It's a little frustrating too, because like when you don't know talk about like not giving you any information like the game the game has zero info in the game how to play the game like literally nothing it's Mm -hmm. like the game starts and it's just there yeah Yeah. and the only way to learn how to play it is basically to go watch youtube videos that the developer has been making like along the way like as he adds new guns or as he had news like news interactions he puts it you he puts them all up on a youtube channel that are all like just in a big like playlist or whatever you can kind of click through and he shows you how to do it and tells you how to do it. That's it. There's nothing in the game hmm. that, that allows you to do this stuff. So we spent a nice, we spent like 10 minutes yesterday just trying to figure out how to get the clip out of an AK. Because it's like, how do you yeah. get the clip out of it? Like, I can't reload it. Like, the clip won't come out. Mm. I don't know I how was, to drop the clip. Yeah. And yeah. I was having a conversation with someone um, the other day about like, you know, how you'd get um, instruction manuals with your games um, and how that's kind of become obsolete with like getting games online and stuff. Um, and, like, we were talking about how, like, you know, if you just didn't read the instruction manual, a lot of times you jump in the game and be like, wait, what am I doing? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. They, they expected yeah. you to do that. That's cool. And funny because as much as tutorial hate became a thing, mm-hmm. that was in response to 
we're not going to make you read the manual. Right, We're exactly. going to do it in-game so you can just turn the game on and go. Yeah. We're not going to make you go do homework first. <laughs> but all the old games that didn't have tutorials, people take that for granted. They made you read the freaking yeah. manual before yeah. you turned it on or yeah. you had no idea. Yeah. And people act like that didn't happen. Like, no, no, see, look, the game just let you and you had to figure it out. Yeah. Like, no, they gave you a freaking manual. Well, I think, I, I think a lot like, of... Illust- but also had really cool stuff in it, too, like illustrated art. It was a whole other experience. <laughs> Yeah, well, we I think a lot of that comes... yesterday was really cool stuff that Metal Gear Solid did, right? Like, you couldn't call the people you needed in that game without the manual, right? It had like valuable information in yeah. it. Like it was, it was used as a companion piece. And, and actually, like... it was. It also had the one clue for a gameplay thing later, where you had to like switch the controller part, ports, and the only pretty much with like... that you got was through the manual. Yeah, and there's interesting stuff you know and a lot of old games used to part of it was just hey i got this cool thing i can put on my wall but they used to come with maps yeah like of the oh, world man. i want them back and, yeah no they were cool stuff that you used, used to get yeah. but people kind of take that for granted now when they hate on tutorials where yeah. it's like well, I, well do you want to do an in-game tutorial for five minutes or do you want to go read for a half hour <laughs> right or do you just want to jump in and be completely clueless and then or go back anyway? Or do you want anyway? a game that's so simple that you can just understand it right out yeah. the gate? Well, that's the, then, that's then, the dream. <laughs> well, that's I think the dream, I, but then everybody says it's shallow yeah. and it's lame. I think a lot of the tutorial hate comes from people who didn't grow up with like the older games. Like probably people in my generation who like never really had to go read a manual. Well, I like, think Ooh, part of the tutorial hate is warranted. Because yeah. there's some yeah. tutorials that are just really bad where mm-hmm. they just completely take your control away and they just make you do like, it's like road steps like yeah. one after the other and it takes forever like some of them there's other ones that i'm trying to come up with like a decent example of where like it kind of happens in game like i really like the witness tutorial important. area like they don't witness bother tutorial you area you is to. one of the best tutorial areas in all of gaming I yeah, think. yeah i really love that's how one. you do it if you can but yeah yeah, so Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades has none of this. Just, <laughs> you turn it on, you're standing in front of a bunch of buttons, and it doesn't even tell you how to push the buttons. There's just buttons. I think it'd be and funny if you... You just kind of stick your hand out naturally, and it'll push the button like for you. Like There's no pull on the trigger. It's just like when the controller connects with it, it pushes it. You That's kind of cool, because it's like how you would do it in life, but everyone's like, wait, but the, but I'm playing a game. There should be a button. And it's like, no, just hit the button. But what if you put one of your friends in it, and you're like, try the AK, and he just picked it up? And he just like masterfully changed it. You'd be like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> well, thought... actually, it was funny because the first person to play it, what's Steve and do? Actually, let's see here. First, the I've first been... three people to play the game had all actually fired a couple of the guns in the game. Oh, nice. Um, and yeah. so when we went in, we were like, "Oh, I know this already. I can know how to like." They just did it. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's kind of cool like that. Yeah, just of all like actually shooting stuff in games, like this is like one of the coolest ones, and I've. Done like some of my own that. VR shooting gallery stuff, and it makes my stuff look shitty. <laughs> <laughs> like, that it's not a high bar, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I've done some similar stuff with like revolvers and whatnot, and they um, it's worth a it's worth a it's worth a go through if you're interested in that kind of thing. I I really like it beyond just the shooting gallery aspect of it, and actually feels really good where you actually shoot stuff. You feel like you actually hit something accurately, and like the target comes back, and you like pull it back in. And you're like, "Oh, look at my grouping here!" It's like, oh, you awesome. actually feel like you actually did it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just from like an interaction perspective, it's pretty cool because I know the guy has been going through a lot of kind of like struggles trying to figure out what the best way to like handle some of these guns are. Like, do you show the controller? Or do you not? Like, if you're holding a pistol in your hand, should it be like? locked to where the trigger point is or should like the grip be locked to kind of like the grip on the wand so that it's actually like kind of bent down and forward but it more matches your hand position so you have to like kind of hold it up a little bit higher but that's how you would actually be holding it Mm. and so it's a lot of kind of like what works how closely do you map it to the real world and at what point do you have to make a concession for vr to make it more not a pain in the ass what's cool about like what he's doing is that kind of work right now is like very useful fundamental information, like almost like necessary research for the state of play in VR. Like, no, I, I, that's partially why I dig it. Yeah. And like I've been following the guy's, you know, Twitter stuff and whatnot. He posts some interesting videos every once in a while. He'll post like a two minute YouTube video. Like, this is a thing that I made. Or he'll be like, two hand interactions on gun is stupid as hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everybody wants to hold the gun with their left hand up front, but it actually like totally breaks your aiming and it's actually easier to just do it with one hand. So we need to figure something out. Huh. Like, interesting. And everybody who played like the thing with like the two handed guns, um, 
has been like, man, like I just feel like I, there should be something there, right? So if you're holding, like picture you're holding like a rifle. Yeah. On your right hand, you're holding the gun. On your left hand, you're holding the stock. Like, right. The front. Or not the stock, but you know, you got like a barrel grip. You're holding up the you're holding up front. So the game will do a thing where it kind of like maps them together, almost like the longbow tutorial, like a VR play. So it's like you know, now it's like the angle between your hands is kind of like the angle of the gun. It kind of sort of helps you steady it, but it also like makes it so, and it feels really kind of awkward almost. Whereas the pistols feel great; they just feel great right out the gate. Mm-hmm. But like the long rifles are kind of weird, and so people have actually been mitigating this by building their own rigs to put the controllers in to play the game and by this i mean so like there's a shotgun in the game where you actually have to like rack the you have to rack you have to actually rack it to to kick a shell out and and load the next one in and you're kind of just doing this in air like in front of you while you're doing it you you know what you're doing and the game vibrates when you're touching it and whatever but this dude basically built a PVC pipe with a stock on the back of it that has a slot for where the grip controller goes and a slot for where like the racking controller goes. Yeah. And that's on like a cylinder that slides like from a point to a point. So you can like basically when you pick up the shotgun in the game, you drop your controller in this one little hole and you yeah. drop your other controller in this other little hole. And now you're holding this rig. And so you're basically holding like a cylinder up in front that you're actually holding and you you slot it back and it hits like the end of it and you slot it forward and it makes it feel like it's actually Uh a shotgun. Mm -hmm. There's people who have been posting pictures of he just added a sniper rifle range. So you have like these long range snipers. You can put these crazy sights on them. And actually they work pretty well in VR, like looking through a sight. It's a little wonky to start, but once you get a hang of it, it's not that bad. And uh, people have been doing that with the sniper rifles, basically like, taping their vive controllers to like a big long pole and then like setting up like freaking sandbags on the floor of their living room and like yeah. laying down with the gun like the virtual That's gun amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and people have been posting pictures of these kind of get-ups online of like mm-hmm. to just add that yeah. haptic like physical feedback to it and and make it and also make it more stable like there's yeah. something like guns kind of stabilize themselves when you put them on stuff and whatnot and if you don't have, if you're not holding the physical gun there's no, yeah. no, there's nothing connecting your two hands i'm interested to see what like, comes out of all this stuff people yeah. just try and shit like that well i think one of the big things that i'm gonna i feel like is gonna be happening relatively quickly and it'll probably issue the vive itself pretty quickly but the fact that they just basically opened their tracking sensor tech and by that i mean they valve has just made available to anybody willing to pay three thousand dollars and attend a seminar uh access to how to basically make their own controllers for the vive they're not giving people the lighthouse like the base station tech but they're if you so if you look at that thing there's a whole bunch of like little dots like all throughout it and that's what by the base stations mm-hmm. there's so they're like there's nothing stopping us from taking those dots and putting them on anything as, as long as you had the sdk set up to recognize those dots as like this gun you could now you've got a gun in the game that you can that's yeah that's right. what i was going to ask is if developers may you know put out like specify like a uh, specialized controllers with their yeah, games i think right. that's going to be a big market for yeah. a lot of the like spe- awesome. like the whole the whole arcade the old school arcade thing where you actually have like guns mounted yeah. and stuff like the whole peripheral market has been pretty much dead for mm-hmm. a hot minute and like there's a yeah yeah because alongside that's this awesome. vr th- thing that's happening is also the 3d printing revolution which yeah completely like if ha- if that was you know just adds a whole another dimension of complexity to a thing that is already so and so like different. back in the day how you had a game that would ship with an instruction manual a new VR game could ship with the Thingiverse model for the controller. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like, all right, here's the controller for this game. Go print it out. That's where it, to play. That's it. where That'd I be see awesome. it going for sure. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's crazy. Kind of people are trying to tie that. Also, there was some new info on that. D- Devo, I forget the name of it. It starts like Devo something or whatever. They're basically making gloves that stop your hands from going for your fingers and stuff from going through stuff. Oh, um, that's cool. So it's kind of like if you picture something on the back of your hand with like uh, a cable that kind of went to your fingertips. And anytime like you touch something in the virtual world and like try to reach out and, and like squeeze it or whatever, like it would put pressure on the like pulling your finger back or whatever. So just like you reach out and grab something, you'd be able to feel like 
there's something there and you can't push your finger through it any farther. Yeah. And you could actually feel if it was hard or yeah. soft or squishy because like, you can change how yeah, much yeah, it pulls yeah. back or not, you know. And that's the same thing as kind of like it's the table. If you touch the table, the table's pushing back on you really is what's happening. So it's like mm-hmm. when you do that, like you're, it's just from behind instead of in front and mm-hmm. it can map to a virtual like 3D map. So awesome. well, probably... the trick now is it can't stop your whole arm. Yeah. Um, so unless you uh, you could still push your hand through a wall. But when you first came up to the wall, it could stop your fingers from like, yeah. or you could reach out and grab small objects and feel their shape or like feel their size. Or, but yeah. you still could just like say, screw this game and just push your, mm-hmm. use your shoulder to just push your hand through the thing or whatever. Elbow everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do you stop that without yeah. putting somebody in an exoskeleton? Right. Um, but it is interesting stuff because it's like one step closer to something that actually makes sense. And it's not like something huge and bulky and insane. Like yeah. If you make those, that kind of system smaller, it's, it's there's nothing out of the realm of possibility where you could have gloves that allow yeah. you to like feel the shape and hardness and size of certain things. I'm kind of wondering about that too. With like, um, I was thinking about this a lot with the uh, um, raw data game. Um, you know, because like you'd get those robots like come up behind you and they'd be hitting you, but like unless you're looking at them, you don't really know that they're there because you don't get that yeah. feedback. And like it would be kind of interesting if even if you just have like something for your torso where like it would like buzz on like a certain area if you're like getting hit it there like just like a little yeah so so beyond the stopping stuff uh there's a group out of rochester called null space vr and they actually came to our spring showcase and we were talking about (laughs) um and we talked to them for a bit about all the stuff that they're working on and that's exactly what they're doing they built they built a vest with uh, basically like sleeves and gloves that have like different haptic sensors all around them Mm -hmm. So you and get so, that feedback. That's really so you get cool. that feedback. It doesn't stop you from like, you know, pushing your hand through the table. Yeah. <clears throat> but it, it adds basically, you know, buzzing yeah. and like pat and like it, and, it sort of makes you feel like the world is able to interact with you. Right. Like so they there. their first customers were the group that were doing the warehouse level zombie runs. Oh. So where people actually were strapping like full computers to their back and VR headsets so they were actually able to run untethered like yeah. through like this giant like warehouse where like zombies are attacking them left for dead style. That's awesome. And one of the big problems they were having was people like, you know, when zombies are swarming you and they're behind you smashing you yeah, up, like unless somebody yet. tells you like, Hey, there's a zombie behind you, like you you don't know. So they wanted to have some type of feedback without hurting people. <laughs> um, and so this thing is basically programmable and it's got like the haptic stuff all over it. So it can make like your back vibrate in yeah. different patterns or whatever or yeah. like or different levels of aggressiveness or whatever. So you could potentially even simulate like somebody like grabbing your shoulders from behind and like just make those parts buzz. Or like, yeah. somebody hitting you in the back, just make it like thud like really hard, like real quick. Yeah. Like without doing damage, but just like letting you know that like, you know, sensory, like there's something there. You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, something need. has come in contact with you yeah, yeah so that they've been having trouble trying to figure out the best way to do like the hand stuff because again you can't stop the hand right so what do you do if you're doing it if all you have is vibration to deal with and you reach your hand out and it's you can't stop it at all from going through the table yeah like, what it's do just you do like, oh it's should nothing well, happen or should it just start buzzing should it start buzzing harder and harder think, like as you start going through stuff yeah mm-hmm. i think that there will be like some non-literal feedback that your brain can ap- appropriate and just be like it's effectively the same. Maybe if it's just your chest vibrating when you go to touch something, like I could see your brain bridging that gap for touch. Well, they say, you know, in a lot of their initial focus testing, there's a lot of people that, that take to it pretty quickly. Like yeah. they realize that like, if you, if you reach out and touch something and it starts like vibrating, like, okay, I'm touching it now. Yeah. And when you move away, like there's nothing there. You're like, okay, that's yeah. not touching. I think that could be. And enough. it changes like that just basic pressure yeah. kind of feeling that you get to that. So I'd just be interested to see, like, if you have, like, that vest system, you got, like, that hand where it actually stops your fingers from going through something. Mm -hmm. So you actually, actually, could like, close your eyes and, like, feel the shape of something. Like, if you have that, and then you add, you know, the ability to walk in any direction for an undisclosed amount of distance, Mm -hmm. like, not just purely purely room scale. Yeah. Is there work being done to make the, either make the tower range go further or to, like, have it be more mobile? In another way, I'm, I'm not 100% convinced that's the right move. Yeah. Um, as cool as room scale is, it's it's always going to be limited by your room. Right. Well, I mean, like I have no idea how else they would do it, but like to, to is there like development to make it more mobile in just any way in general? 
Well, I mean, there's AR stuff that you can do uh-huh. where, or like, like it, some people call it mixed reality now, where if you have like that kind of stuff where you're walking down the hallway and there's like a game kind of being played out within that same space, like that's one thing. Mm-hmm. But if you're saying I want to play Fallout or like the Solace Project and I want to be able to run forever in whatever direction, it's, it's an impossible task. Like it right. doesn't matter how big the base stations are. You can set them up from New York to LA and it's not really going to yeah. work that way you think. Cause you're going to run into pedestrians in the street. Right. Like, like how I mean, far can you run? Yeah. Like, like it doesn't definitely work. Definitely like a thing is like, where would you even go to have like a large space? Like a lot of people don't have access to anything. I mean, for, like, I, so know, I guess that's what I'm saying. Like right. you can see that constraint right yeah. there. Yeah. Like and right there. There's a lot of people who yeah. can't even set their vive up to the max base station range. Cause they don't have a room big enough in their house. Yeah. So, that limitation needs to be overcome somehow. I mean, the omnidirectional treadmill is one way that people mm-hmm. are doing it. Obviously, like the teleportation and like the warping mechanics yeah. is kind of like one way to kind of mitigate it. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's probably the biggest thing that I'm interested in, like seeing what solutions people come up with. For, yeah, I mean, to make it seem the more omnidirectional easier. treadmill does not seem like a really bad idea, as long as you can still allow for a f- certain things that that locks you out of being able to do, like duck down or like move naturally. You can't like lean around things properly. Like you're strapped into this thing, right? Yeah. Like you can't like take a seat on the floor. You, you, can't, you can't do what I down. do in raw data and jump 10 feet backwards. Yeah, you, you can't dive and like <laughs> yeah. roll around or like take a knee. Like you can't do any of those things. You're yeah. kind of strapped in. You're always, and if you're, you're just strapped. like, all right, well, I'm going to take the fact that I can't, I have to be standing at all times, then that's something of a solution, possibly. Mm-hmm. But it takes out a lot of games where, you, like, crouching is part of the mechanic. Right. Yeah. I mean, and if you want, and if the end goal is, like, natural motion in, like, a virtual world, which I think really that's partially the end goal, like, to start. And it's not to say that it can't become some kind of hybrid, mm-hmm. like it already has become, but, like, continuing down that path. But I think the end goal is to be able to kind of. You know, the end goal is the kind of the sword art online thing where you're like, you can like lay in bed and then feel like you're yeah. still running through a field. Like, yeah. So you don't need all that space yeah. and have to do all that stuff, but it still feels like that's what you're doing. Yeah, like still mentally. Feels real. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about No Man's Sky in VR because, like, certainly with the star map, it would be really cool. Um, and some of the like exploring the planets, it would be cool. But when you're in the spaceship like you can do like barrel rolls and stuff and like there's no way to really make that feel natural if you put that game in vr like you would you'd like do a barrel roll on your ship and something the ship is above your head and you're like upside down like it just wouldn't translate well i'm not explaining this um (laughs) i don't know i guess i'd have to like go into the game and show you what i'm talking about and try to explain it at the same time. Um, yeah, maybe. Because one like, of the things that like that's actually really easy to do is like vehicle based movement. Like yeah. anything that you where you're in a vehicle, like that works in VR out the gate because you're just sitting in a seat. Yeah, and like it would work kind of like this, but um, I feel like that works better for like cars. Like your car doesn't drive up a wall and suddenly like the ground is at one angle and the wall is at another. And uh, you're, I mean, you know. Eve works really well. I mean, I've made my own yeah. versions of this stuff too and it works fine as long as you have a cockpit that has like a frame of reference uh-huh. there's another game called uh distance that um some some guys made and that's you they ported they basically did a overhaul of what they were doing to put vr in and uh that's a game literally where you like are driving a car and you jump off a ramp and then flip upside down and stick to the ceiling and then flip over and stick to the wall and like while you're driving and it actually feels crazy like okay. it doesn't feel it doesn't didn't make me sick mm-hmm. it just felt nutty like it's yeah. it feels cool it feels like it's sh- like it's exciting right yeah. it's not okay. it's not sickening that's cool as long as you have like a cockpit now if you were playing that like third person and the thing was like spinning you yeah, around and you had like no frame of reference it would probably all. make you throw up immediately yeah. um but the fact that they changed the the viewpoint to be like directly in the driver's seat mm-hmm. and you have that kind of same frame of reference around yeah. it it works still it's entirely possible that my brain is making this way more complicated than it needs to be. So, yeah. Well, it's hard to know. Yeah. I mean, until you just do it. Yeah. But yeah, um, that's actually one of the things that's a little frustrating playing No Man's Sky just on the computer is like the star map and like you go look at it and it's like, I really wish I could just like look around at all this stuff, yeah. but you know, I'm stuck with this rectangle that I can look at one thing at a time, basically. It's, it's right. funny you mentioned that because 
Elite Dangerous is another space flight game that's been doing VR since DK1. Mm-hmm. I read an article, I don't know, a month or so ago about somebody who's put like 2,000 hours into this game and basically played the game for like a thousand hours before he got a vr headset and then played it with the vr headset Mm -hmm. and he's like and he just didn't look back and he's like as an experiment i went back to try to just play it on the on like on the screen like i had been playing it before and he wrote like this nice kind of long article of just like but the 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 end takeaway is just like holy shit like you can't yeah like who who plays a game like this this is bullshit <laughs> like i can't see anything <laughs> yeah. they're locking my view to one direction i can't tell what the hell's happening like this is basically he just like takes this game that he loves and just like tears it apart yeah. on screen he's like meanwhile in the vr version i have all of these things at my disposal <laughs> at all times and it's actually really cool yeah and then i go back to playing it like now i feel like i'm playing a game through a postage stamp and like it's garbage and yeah. it makes me hate it and like i don't understand how people enjoyed this before including myself who put a thousand hours in <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, if, if that isn't recommendation for the VR, I don't know what is. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like a no-brainer, though, right? I yeah. Mean, if you, especially if you think a game like that or like a racing game or whatever. Right. right? When they game. like lock your your view in, yeah. you don't have depth perception. You're yeah. locked yeah. Just looking forward. I based on like, I yeah. have not gone back to Solus Project outside of the VR. I've not played <laughs> it. So <laughs> you got to get yourself back into that creepy cavern oh you got yourself God. into. Yeah, I have to get myself out. Actually, <laughs> uh. just walk through the wall. No, I'm, like, in a part where yeah. I can't do that anymore. Oh. Yep. All right. Well, I think we need to wrap it up. Yep. Have a short, well, a normal one. Not a short one. <laughs> a normal, yeah. Just a normal length one today. Any Sounds last words? Good. No. Nope. All right. Well, check us out on Twitter, at Buff Game Space. Uh, have any, anything you want to say to us on the podcast? Um, email info at buffalogamespace.com or you could leave a comment on YouTube leave a comment on YouTube it's nice (laughs) and yeah I guess uh, see you guys next week bye